So, uh, we are So, we are discussing the major uh, role of uh, disaster management uh, in the proactive regime. So, here in the case of this uh, proactive uh, regime, uh, we have adopted uh, different kinds of uh, mechanisms uh, to solve the problems caused by the disasters. So, here in this context uh, of uh, disaster management, for example, take the case of drill. So, what do you mean by drill here? Drill is a kind of uh, activity being practiced by the people of a region on the basis of the uh, vulnerability of the region on the basis of the type of disaster. So, a kind of training is being given or a necessary steps need to be taken so that they are made to practice. Drill means uh, here the condition is they are made to practice to do it in a such a manner. For example, you are living in a skyscraper for example. In this case, uh, for example, when you are living in a skyscraper, uh, when there is a kind of uh, earthquake or tremors you experience, you must not use elevators there. You have to, you have to use the staircase or any other uh, safety paths to get out. Uh, otherwise, what happens is uh, the, the lift may not work because of the power failure, you will be stuck inside or sometimes you must not use even the staircase. The you need to stay in the building at a certain position in the building, not at every place possible. You are supposed to go to the corners of the of your house where you have got columns in the walls. So, columns here implies uh, while constructing a building, for example, you have got uh, columns and beams. So, when there is an earthquake, uh, what happens is, uh, uh, the walls uh, fall. So, where, wherever there is a column which is made up of concrete in the home or a house, uh, the probability of falling of a wall is minimum or you need to take the support of a furniture near the column will save your life is a practice mechanism which you need to follow where in a subconscious state uh, when you are able to practice in advance, you will be able to make it, uh, but when you do not uh, have this kind of practice in advance. Uh, because we lose our consciousness and uh, and what happens is uh, subjecting to the impact uh, of the disaster probability increases. So, drill is one of the major role of disaster management, risk management. So, identifying the threats, so where you have got uh, this kind of uh, probability of an earthquake or a cyclone or a drought uh, can be identified the probability of occurrence of a cyclone at the coast is more, the probability of occurrence of cyclone in the interior of the peninsula is less. So, depending upon the probability, the precautionary measures acting in advance uh, varies. The impact can be assessed, the mitigative measures means certain impacts need to be, certain measures need to be taken, certain acts need to be done to reduce the consequences of a hazard. For example, as I have mentioned, uh, vaccination is a mitigative measures, not uh, allowing the people to construct uh, habitats in a low lying region which is being subjected to, which may be subjected to inundation is a mitigative measure. Hazard mapping, so map a zone which is being subjected to cyclone, map a zone which is being subjected to a high intense earthquakes, uh, so that uh, in these regions uh, human habitations are not allowed. So, the loss of life and property can be minimized. With this kind of uh, disaster management, uh, you can minimize uh, the loss of life and property. For example, disaster preparedness and evacuation. So, you are prepared in advance in terms of training uh, NDRF forces, pre-positioning them. So, you when you know that a region is subject uh, is going to be subjected to an earthquake or a cyclone, evacuate the people from the region, so that uh, loss can be minimized. Evacuation plans must be there, so that you must be having an idea about your uh, habitat. So, in which direction uh, you, you can escape, what are the probable routes where you get you can get jammed, what are the probable routes where you can escape very easily, what are the probable routes you can move away from the disaster. For example, you may have a, an industry which may release a poisonous gas. So, 
uh, you must not move towards the industry which is releasing poisonous gas. You must have the idea of uh, the seasons in your region where the directional wind changes because of monsoon on the basis of which this poisonous gas spreads accordingly, you need to move away. So that is what is known as awareness and evacuas evacuation plans is emergency shelter. So because of the collapse of uh, the house, because of uh, an earthquake or because of uh, a cyclone, a temporary constructions must be able to made in terms of uh, shelters uh, uh, must be made uh, so that the people must be able to provide with uh, certain uh, temporary shelters to save themselves, pre-positioning supplies and drills. So you must be able to keep certain resources essential to life-saving resources especially uh, in a pre-positioning uh, them in a location essential so that they can save life. So drill preparing the people for drill in a region. So the fire personnel what to do? For example, previously we don't have skyscrapers. Now we have skyscrapers in our metropolitan cities. So the mechanism to deal with a fire accident uh, in a skyscraper is something different from uh, an ordinary house. So the fire personnel, uh, the fire brigade need to be trained properly accordingly. What are the fire safety mechanisms need to be followed in these kind of uh, metropolitan cities uh, uh, in the case of skyscrapers, uh, etc varies from condition to condition. So, uh, for a new change, uh, a drill need to be made. So, this is the way you need to escape from an uh, earthquake. So, you need me when the tremors are more, you must not run away passing through staircases or uh, uh, elevators where you may be impacted. So, the best way to uh, escape is using a strong furniture, taking it as a support towards the columns uh, inside the home is the best way to escape if the tremors are high. So what, how to uh, save the people who have been impacted by poisonous gases? First you must be able to save yourself. So you need to have certain gaskets to support uh, yourself, life saving, uh, breathing in mechanisms uh, uh, in terms of oxygen and the way you need to carry the impacted people, there is a certain mechanism which you need to follow. So, the oxygen cylinders, etc., need to be made in advance. So, in the case of uh, uh, logistics, for example, uh, in the case of uh, a helicopter, how you need to get into an area, how you need to get down, must be practiced through drills uh, to the NDRF forces. So these are all uh, different uh, drills practiced for different variant types of disasters. So how to carry uh, cattle and animals it is being practiced through a dummy animal in the drills. So next the control of the events. So in the case of the control of the events means for example in the case of pandemic uh, the impact being caused by the first wave and the second wave is so huge, but uh, when you relatively compare with the third wave, the impact is less. The reason behind it is you are able to anticipate it and you are able to take certain necessary steps in terms of migration of people. You have taken certain steps to have certain certificates, vaccination certificates, then only you are allowed to travel is uh, a mechanism. So anticipation so that you need to take booster doses etc is a kind of a anticipation mechanism. So we have anticipated the third wave uh, necessary steps being taken to avoid that. You have anticipated uh, a drought or you are, uh, we are in the case of for example in the, in the Hyderabad in, the, in our metropolitan city, who the government has anticipated the inundation of the low lying regions because of the cloud burst. So in advance before the occurrence of the monsoons, uh, the government has made necessary steps to avoid these kind of dangers which have been happened previously in the last couple of monsoons uh, to avoid loss of life, uh, drainage is being made clear, the manholes are being made perfect. Uh, so it is a kind of anticipation to avoid disaster, uh, to avoid the loss of life and property. Preparedness, making the NDRF forces to place at a certain locations, pre-positioning making the vaccines, keeping the vaccines in advance, uh, keeping the stockpiles of uh, medicines, 
is a preparedness. Having food storage in FCI go-downs is a preparedness. Balanced response with effective leadership. Here the balanced response here implies that uh, uh, people who are vulnerable irrespective of uh, the race, caste, religion or a political party, relatives or not, irrespective of these uh, people need to be served especially to the vulnerable, especially in the case of a disaster because if a balanced supply or treatment or mitigation is not done throughout the society during a disaster, itself leads to a consequence which cannot be managed because of the revolt of the peop people. So, in this case, uh, you, we need to tackle the situation on the basis of the intensity of vulnerability of the sections so that uh, we can avoid uh, the retaliation of the people. Sometimes the law and order situation cannot be controlled when balanced uh, response is not being given to the people who are vulnerable, irrespective of caste, creed and political party they belong to. Equity of assistance. So, everybody must be treated equally and assisted equally on the basis of vulnerability. More of the people who are vulnerable, they must be concentrated more. That is what equity is on the basis of the intensity of vulnerability of sections of people in terms of age, sex, region, territory, religion, etc. So, these uh, uh, NDRF forces are being trained in advance, explaining them how to uh, tackle different variant types of uh, disasters. The essential uh, kind of kit you need to have in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, basic essential requirements like uh, uh, the water or the for the purpose of communication radio or a torch or medicines or first aid, ki first aid kit, the batteries where when you do not have the power you may during night time for the purpose of visibility, certain basic essential uh, required uh, infrastructure life saving devices you must be able to have. So, there are three goals of a disaster plan. What are they? Keep employees safe, secure dangerous objects and chemicals. So, when you are in a habitat, when you are in an industry, there is possibility that there are certain explosives which may lead to further adding fuel to the fire may cause a lot of uh, damage. So, you must be able to identify certain conditions and you must be able to prevent those kind of accidents in advance and keep your business running. So, the thing is for example, the kind of economic activity uh, which is essential for the generation of resource and security must happen. Otherwise, uh, otherwise what happens is it leads to a, f a further more major disaster. For example, the intensity of lockdown duration been made in the first wave and the second wave and relatively compared with the third wave. And now, even though we are expecting some other waves, we are not thinking about lockdown. He, why? Because when the essential activities need to be done in an economy which are essential for the survival of the society are must. When those are being arrested, the mere existence of the society itself will be questioned. So, there are certain activities which are essential need to be run. For example, agriculture, defense, medical systems, these are certain basic essential aspects in an economy need to be run. Otherwise, uh, uh, apart from the hazard, uh, these uh, stopping of these activities leads to major disasters. So, y with these kind of scenario which is a new normal need to be observed where the activities need to be made continued in a new condition is what uh, keeping your business running uh, is one of the main aims of a disaster management plan. So, this disaster management has got four stages, prevention, preparedness, response and recovery. So, these are the stages in a sequence uh, where in the prevention you have got mitigative measures. Mitigative measures uh, uh, can be followed before the occurrence of the disaster and after the occurrence of the disaster also, which varies from disaster 
to disaster. I will be discussing with you when I specifically discuss uh, uh, a type of disaster, you will be able to know the type of mitigative measures essential need to be taken for a, a unique disaster before and after the disaster. So, here in this context, uh, we must not think that uh, di disaster will happen to somebody else. There is every probability that uh, disaster can happen to everybody possible. So, you must be able to counsel yourself or modify your brain and uh, psychic state that when a kind of disaster happens in a society to somebody else, why it can't happen to us? So, in this context, uh, not to have a psychological shock, to recover fast, being prepared psychologically is more much more important uh, to make actions to recover more faster from a disaster. It is one of the major aspect of disaster management personally, because the reason behind it is this disaster management when it is been considered. Uh, when we are made about, uh, aware, when we are aware of the types of disasters, when we are being taught about disasters, uh, we must not wait for some other NDRF forces or management to come and help us. So, we need to know a kind of mechanism to save ourselves first, because when you are waiting for somebody else to save, you may lose everything else. So, in this context, we need to be prepared psychologically, physically, uh, storing the essential uh, uh, preparedness, resources, uh, inventory and logistics. In every respect, you must be able to think because uh, uh, nature and man are uh, unpredictable. Resource management is uh, another aspect of uh, disaster management. In this case of resource management, uh, with the availability of scarce resource, uh, maximization of their use must be the method of disaster management. So, this is one of the major aspect of uh, disaster management. For example, to make you understand uh, what is meant by maximization of resource means. For example, you have got a liter water uh, when you are stuck in a cyclone somewhere else, uh, you are isolated uh, because, of, uh, uh, because of an earthquake or something else when you are stuck in a room. So, drinking this liter water in a day may lead to death after a couple of days, but uh, having a glass of water per day can make you be alive for four days with the same uh, liter of water. So, in this context, with the minimum available resources, it might be water, medicine or food or what not, it must be judicially used in that circumstances to be alive which varies from the normal uh, conditions. That is what uh, resource maximization is. So, uh, these disasters are being classified on the basis of uh, different, uh, uh, because these uh, uh, disasters are caused uh, naturally and disasters are caused uh, by man himself. So, uh, the broad way of uh, classifying disasters are natural disasters and man-made dis disasters or otherwise also known as anthropogenic. Man-made are also known as anthropogenic. So, uh, these natural disasters are triggered by natural phenomena. The examples of uh, natural disasters are, for example, the cyclone, the earthquakes, flood, etcetera can be given as an example of uh, natural disasters. The pandemic can also be considered uh, considered as a natural disaster. So, uh, human factors are responsible for disaster. Example, flood plains. For example, in the case of flood plains, for example, when you are allowing a human habitation to construct in a region which is going to be inundated uh, because of floods, uh, it is a man-made disaster because you know that it is going to be inundated, which can be avoided, it can be considered as a a man-made disaster in this context. So, in this case, what happens is, uh, uh, environmental degradation may lead to disaster or a disaster may lead to environmental degradation. You know, there is possibility of uh, both the ways. So, in this case, uh, one of the major factors for uh, uh, a disaster, for example, environmental degradation. So, what is happening here? We are 
uh, deforesting, the area essential in terms of forest cover is being depleted. Consequentially, what is happening to the percentage of carbon dioxide available is increasing. The availability of carbon dioxide or the increasing in the percentage of carbon dioxide is leading to uh, greenhouse impact. Greenhouse impact is leading to global warming. Global warming is leading to the inundation of uh, uh, the low lying regions because of the melting of uh, glaciers. So, for example, poor fra farming practices is also uh, one of the reasons for a disaster. For example, uh, take the case of the kind of uh, kind of uh, farming practices right now which we are doing. Uh, for example, when you are using intense uh, uh, use of uh, pesticides, for example, which is not environmental friendly, leading to the percolation of the pesticides into the soil, killing the soil bacteria essential because there is an essential soil bacteria like azetobacter or rhizobium, etc. are essential for fixing the atmospheric nitrogen which is being made available to the plants. So, when you are using the pesticides which kill the essential uh, microbiota, essential in the soil when they are being killed, fixation of uh, nitrogen does not happen, the availability of nitrogen is less. When the availability of nitrogen is less, the agricultural production is less, the availability of food is less and the availability of food is less. Uh, the survival rate for us will be questioned in future with these wrong agricultural practices. So, so here uh, overgrazing, overgrazing is a wrong agricultural practice which may lead to a disaster because it is the vegetation roots which hold the soil tight, which helps in percolation rather than flooding of water, which helps in increasing the water table, which helps in supplying of water throughout the year through slowly dripping uh, uh, to the low lying regions because these uh, higher catchment regions with vegetation acts as a sponge holding uh, the water dripping slowly throughout the day, throughout the year avoiding uh, floods uh, and uh, avoiding floods and they also avoid drought in summer, avoids floods in rainy season. So, overgrazing has got such a kind of consequences, deforestation has got such a kind of uh, consequences. For example, demand for firewood. So, when you are uh, degrading the forest for firewood, the consequences are the same. Excessive exploitation. So, in this process, for example, you are living in a building, just imagine, take the case of bricks or the cement or the iron in the concrete or the gravel or the, or the metal in the construction, the granite stones from where they have been deri derived, they have been derived through the exploitation and uh, quarrying of uh, the territories, forests, etc. In this process, you are destructing the environment, causing to disasters. So, excessive exploitation is one of the reason, deforestation is one of the reason, erosion is one of the reason. So, when the, when you do not have a, when you do not have a vegetation, the topsoil is being subjected to weathering and erosion. When uh, topsoil is being subjected to weathering and erosion, it leads to uh, it leads to loss of nutrition. For example, we in our body have got iron, calcium, potassium, magnesium, sodium, many different kinds of elements uh, which are being derived from the soil by the plants. We are consuming the plants, uh, di uh, plants in terms of food, uh, leafy vegetables, fruits, rice, wheat, etc which are supplying these elements essential with which we are being constructed. So, the material with which we are being made itself uh, gets reduced. When the, when the fertility of the soil is being impacted because of uh, erosion. Next is siltation and flooding because when the uh, catchment region is being subjected to high amount of weathering and erosional activity, what happens is uh, this fills the river valley. When the river valley is being silted by the deposition of weathered and eroded material, the volume of the river valley decreases leading to flooding very easily because when the river itself is being filled with this mud, the river overflows when it rains heavily leading to flooding and disaster. These are all the different environmental degradational factors because of improper management of environment. The next aspect is the man-made disasters. 
in this classification of man-made disasters. One is armed conflict. So, the case for example, the classic example of the man-made conflict right now, the world is being impacted because of uh, the Ukraine war for example, which has impacted the supply of petroleum to our country, which has impacted the supply of edible oil to our country, uh, is leading to some other consequences in trade. So, this is an example of uh, armed conflict uh, which is leading to a disaster, which lead to the death of uh, lakhs of people. So, here in this context, uh, technological uh, disasters, for example, if there is uh, an improper uh, management of an industry or if there is uh, an improper uh, management of weapons, uh, what happens is uh, they may misfire. So, for example, when you have an incipient technology, for example, you are generating power with the help of, uh, with the help of thermal power. So, coal, coal is the uh, fossil fuel which is responsible for, uh, coal is the fossil fuel which is responsible for releasing uh, greenhouse gases. So, when you are using this kind of technology where you are depending upon fossil fuel for the generation of uh, power, it is leading to global warming, leading to destruction. But when you have adopted the technological capability of uh, transforming to solar power or wind power which are sustainable, the disaster can be avoided is another advantage with this kind of disaster management. For example, we are using right now chlorofluorocarbons for uh, air conditioning. When you are able to find a substitute uh, for chlorofluorocarbons, you can avoid uh, uh, ozone holes so that uh, the impact of ultraviolet radiation can be reduced. Next is hazards in human settlements. So, here in the case of uh, hazards in human settlements, for example, take the case of a buffer zone. Oh, when a buffer zone is being not being made uh, uh, between industries and human habitations or between uh, ammunition industries and human habitations. It leads to disaster. A buffer zone is a region or a territory which is not allowed to human habitation and this is being allowed to develop only green zones for the development of afforestation. What happens is it has got a double edged advantage where it, it is helpful in maintaining the environment, maintaining the essential forest cover. At the same time, it avoids the loss of uh, life and property because when there is a distance being maintained between these kind of industries which are dangerous and human habitations by using uh, buffer zones, uh, destruction or loss of life and property can be avoided with buffer zones uh, in the case of uh, human settlements. So, another way of classification of disasters. Disasters are classified in another way. Uh, previously, I have classified the disasters and I have given examples in terms of natural and man-made disasters. In other way, disasters are being classified. For example, a question can be asked in an examination to classify disasters in terms of man-made disasters and natural disasters. This is another mode of classification where uh, they are being classified into endogenetic uh, and exogenetic. So, there are certain factors which are responsible uh, which are responsible for a disaster which are being generated within the earth's interior. For example, an earthquake uh, is uh, an endogenetic factor. Exogenetic means uh, out of the layer of the earth's uh, topographical features like for example, hydrological or like the cyclone or meteorological drought. Uh, these are all considered uh, as uh, exogenetic factors which are responsible for uh, disasters. Uh, Biotic means when a living organisms are responsible for a disaster. When a living organisms are responsible for a disaster like microorganisms are considered as a biotic disaster. For example, uh, the pandemic recently which we have experienced, uh, the corona is an example of a biotic factor. Uh, a microbial like a virus is responsible for a disaster causing pandemic. Uh, so, it can be a plant or an animal or a microbe or considered as a, a biotic disaster. Anthropogenic includes uh, uh, which is caused by man uh, like for example, chemical and biological explosions, warfare. Uh, these kind of uh, aspects can be considered as a man-made disaster. So, uh, when a question is being asked to classify on the basis of natural man-made endogenetic, exogenetic, biotic, anthropogenic. Anthropogenetic or man-made is one and the same. Do not get confused between this. 
So, there are certain range of tools for disaster management. So, this uh, range of tools of disaster management friends, uh, I will be discussing uh, you in the next uh, episode as far as a range of uh, uh, tools of disaster management are considered. Thank you.